hey, 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 we're back, we're black, we're brown, ambition, 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 ambition. ambition. I hit the high note, Mandy. You did. Uh, (laughs) Something's up with Riverside today, so if the podcast sounds funky wonky, like, I don't know, Tiff, because you disappeared for like half a second, but I hear hear you, I see you, pretty in pink. (laughs) <laughs> Thank God. I miss yeah, the so, days when it was just audio, to be yeah. honest. Yeah, because it's just video. There's always something. There's always something. Well, I just dragged myself home from the airport. I am fresh off Delta <gasps> Flight 2739 from Atlanta. Where did you Atlanta. come from? Atlanta. I saw you was with your my daddy. Home. I was. I saw my dad. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord. So the good stuff, the positive stuff is that I saw my dad. He's healthy. Um, he's doing well. He's back to his he's been back to his self for a few months now. But like he's back to driving me crazy. And <laughs> I had to like really remind myself, like, remember when you were afraid you were going to lose him and you just prayed? Oh. <laughs> he's still here um, to <laughs> annoy me. Um, but no, we had a we actually had. I, I, we, we would like go on, we're too similar. My dad and I, we, we both want to be in the driver's seat. We both want to do it our way. And in the past I would let that drive me nuts, but now I just, I just roll with it. Like I'm in his car. I'm going to say goodbye to the next eight, eight hours of my day that I had planned. <laughs> Cause at a minimum, when you get in the car with Alton Woodruff, you are going to lose six to eight hours of your life <laughs> to whatever nonsense, whatever little whims and I saw adventures. I went fishing, you went to a game. Do you know it's the journey, not the destiny? <laughs> now, Look that at therapy is at work. <laughs> it really is. We went to the fourth quarter of the Hawks game. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we went fishing for a collective like time of rod in the water, not trying to find all the things that we needed to go fishing, like 17 minutes, uh, oh. which is about all I needed. <laughs> but it was... I mean, honestly, it really is a journey, not the destination. So for me, it's just about being in the car, just talking about whatever. Mm. You know, my dad likes to call random cousins and uncles. And then he's like, here, Mandy Boo, say hello. And then I got to like talk to them and hear about the last time they saw me. And (laughs) It's cute. It's a nice rhythm to it. Um, It was a really pleasant visit. And I also did FinCon. Tell us about the Fin of the Con. Our, our origin story. FinCon yes. was lovely. Okay. I mean, it was in Atlanta, so I had to go. I yeah. had missed. Yeah, I had missed last year's New Orleans because my dad was sick and all this mm-hmm. stuff was happening. Mm-hmm. Um, it's always a good time. I mean, for me, it's just like it's a it's like a high school reunion, college reunion yes. type vibe. And it genuinely is so nice just to get to squeeze your people that you only see on the internet. So, yeah. At one point, who was it? Yeah, Nelly. Uh, Miss Be Helpful, Yanelli, yes. incredible. We've she's been on the show for her her book that came out. Yes. Um, she came up behind me and gave me a hug, and I was just like, "Why am I getting emotional? People are so sweet." Uh-huh. Um, I'm not gonna lie, it was jelly. Yeah, I mean, it, it's always gonna give you a little bit of FOMO when you see people yeah. that you know that you and love like, hanging you out. Know? I was like, yeah. I can see that. If I'm not banned for life, I mean, I'm not a poster. You're girl. so not. <laughs> You're so not. <laughs> I'm telling you, you would just need a disguise if you wanted to not be bothered. That's all because everyone <laughs> no, loves you there. No, because it's like all my, it's all the faves in personal finance. I know I saw Rachel, my homie there. Mm-hmm. You know, we saw Chris, Popcorn Finance, um, Mark, um, your, what yeah. is it? Your Better Wallet. Better Wallet. Um, of She'll get I it saw... one day, Mark. Don't worry. <laughs> the best of the wallets. <laughs> I saw the old, old school Mr. character. Good time wallet. <laughs> Lelias, um, uh, oh, I forget her um uh her uh is it lilias lily lily yeah, i thought it was I lily think, but is it lilias like, her full name i don't know i think so oh. that's the homie aka Carrie your financial King. stylist yeah there was just so many i just saw everybody's posts and um i don't know yeah. plus two i love like you know the behind the scenes the you know the brown version of, of what happens at fincon that's where i was really following <laughs> so i loved all that to see all the meetups all the hangouts all the connections it's honestly i mean yeah. aside from like you know we're not going to dredge up old drama but aside mm-hmm. from like what happened before quite honestly fincon was always a good time that was never the issue you know like i love meeting people i always thought that they had really great breakout sessions like really mm-hmm. great keynotes you know i just you know yeah that, that was never the issue so 
awesome. I think it genuinely is one of the, and it's become increasingly, well, let me finish a sentence for once. I think it is one of the best conferences mm -hmm. for the audience that it wants to serve. Yes. Like you will go and you will leave with gems and lots of gems. And the vibe is very good and collegial, mm -hmm. um, 10 out of 10. And I also feel like um, increasingly it's, I, I feel like you don't need to necessarily be in a financial like space with your content mm -hmm. creation to benefit from FinCon because it's not like there's a ton of sessions on the latest 529 plan or mm -hmm. complex tax code changes and things like that. It's a lot of literally running a business, personal brand, mm -hmm. being a business owner, scaling brand partnerships. They really care about helping you leave with, you know, um, elements that are going to like take your business to the next level and mm -hmm. meetups and mentorships and so much to offer. And yeah, I, but I, there's nothing's going to beat the OG girl crew, black girl crew from mm -hmm. FinCon 2024, 2014. Yes, yes. In New Orleans, I was like, well, I need my Sandy. I need my Tiffy. I need my Tanya. Yeah. Um, I need my, my Marsha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but maybe one day, maybe one day we can get it back together, get the yeah. game back together at FinCon, even if it's just for, you know, literally you just walk into the lobby and you have a party. That's I just mean, what it's like. that's the thing. Lynette, you know, um, Lynette, you know yeah, like, Lynette. yeah, it just, yeah, it just was like, it just looked like such a great time. And I was like, Mandy, I'm mm -hmm. having FOMO. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I am in my neurodivergent era. I'm not, I don't know what to, I'm not really embracing any particular labels or whatnot, but I'm in my era of like accepting the fact that I process things really differently. And I gave myself so much grace, um, okay. you know, go for a couple hours, leave, mm. get your, you know, recharge time. But even when you're there, it's hard because everyone wants you to, to go here and there and there's different events and they're like yes. open bar and free food and like all this stuff is happening. Um, but I was like, yeah, I think I'm just going to go hang out with my dad at I the Hawks that. game. Oh, anybody. <laughs> my dad works for Marta. Shit. Be... Man, old black man. They don't give a what? Okay. But that's a nice van. It had like all the chargers, including the new USB-C charger in the seat. <laughs> it was really nice. I was like, I need to get me a minivan. Is that Girl. how you guys drive around? Just comfortable and spacious? I knew that black men would do whatever when uh, Jarrell's 40th birthday, there was a ambulance outside. I said, oh my gosh, everybody's okay? One of his homeboys, Girl. Lights on, came to get a plate. It was like, nah, I'm, I'm a, don't worry, Mr. Terrell. I'm going to leave in a minute. I just came to get a plate, see my homie. What's up? I was like, sir, I need you to go out there and go stay by. <laughs> That's what, it, you know, it reminds me of is Regina King from How Stella Got Her Groove Back. When, like, Regina King, her sister in that movie, um, Angela Bassett's yes, sister. Yes. She's an EMT or something. Yes. And I think she does pull up in her, her ambulance at a cookout or something like that. I love us. I yes, do. I do. I got to go see the station. You dropped me off. Um, yeah, it was it was a great it was a great little trip, and I I literally just landed today. So, um, gosh, I I feel like I've been in a little Atlanta bubble, but at the same time, my anxiety around the election was on a hundred being in Georgia. <laughs> no, I was like, Ooh. I know. I'm not gonna lie. Why? You know, I'm taking November off because that is mm -hmm. Jarrell month. Um, I'm also going to take it off from social media. Mm. I said, I'm not, the last that election very healthy. almost took me out. I was beating yeah. every article, every post, every, 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 and my heart, like literally my blood pressure was through the roof. And I said, mm, I can stay informed without infecting myself with fear Ooh, and like negativity. That. And um, I've already pre-voted because I said, you know what? I'm actually not also trusting people not to act dumb. And so thank, I said pre-voted, but yeah, I voted early. I was yeah. so happy. I got like my ballot thing in the mail and it was like, I'd never voted early before. Um, oh, really? You know, I just, okay. just like, yeah, because honestly it's never usually busy or anything like that. But I said, you know what? I'm going for a walk today. The place where I'm voting, it's like maybe like a 20 minute walk away. And I'm like, it was beautiful right outside the park. And when I got there, I had seen the line earlier when I got there, you know, there's always this, you know, at the voting um, stations, there's always older black ladies that just be like, they they do it Especially every year. Newark. I mean, every year, Bless baby. Them. Right? <laughs> and they were just like, I mean, I mean, literally, um, average it's age. Coretta. 
Girl, 75 <laughs> average age, okay? It's they, Sylvia. They, the young one is 65. The average what is that? <laughs> average age? I have not met one of those. No, no, I said the average age of them ladies. Oh, the like average age. Okay. Girl, everybody's in a walker. I loved it. And they were, I said, has it been busy? They're like, from sun up to sundown, baby. We ain't had a moment's rest. And I just they love like, it. Wow. And what I love. Living like, off of munchkins from Dunkin' and girl. little cups of coffee. <laughs> and orange juice. <laughs> And yeah. so of um, Tropicana to be exact. And so, but basically, you know, the women there, they had done this year after year. They were like, we've never seen this much um, early registry, early vo- voting turnout. So that was a really interesting kind of, you know, like, oh, really? They're like, yeah, this has been amazing. You know, so, yeah, she, you know, one lady was like, I love it. I love it. <laughs> you know, of course, you know, they're not telling you just I love voting in general. You know, I'm not trying mm-hmm. to get in trouble. Um, but yeah, it was yeah. just. So it was, I was so glad because I'm not going to lie, on election day, I plan to be hunkered down with my Uber Eats. And yeah, what's your plan? We all need a plan. No, I said I'm not actually watching because I was watching hour by hour, minute by minute, day by day. No, I am going to have like a series of videos of um of movies I want to watch and books I want to read. And I'm just going okay. to like try to like, you know, I'm telling all my folks, I don't, don't call me with moment, but like when it's done, it's done. But I don't want to, mm. like, I was watching moment by moment, hour by hour. My heart rate was just racing. I'm not doing that this year. Mm. I can't take it. My, the only thing my, I my, do my... want to stay tuned for is I, I hope they're going to do a live feed of Kamala's watch party because I hear it's going to be at Howard. Is that still the Ooh, case? I don't um, know. Yeah. So if that happens, but I mean, the beauty of having kids, I'm trying to think what I have planned that day. It's like, it's just going to be a day. I'm just going to mm. try to like enjoy it. I do think I'm going to take the boys when I pick them up today and go vote early um, you know, so they can learn about civic duty yeah. and get a sticker. Um, <laughs> I want to buy. Gotta love that. Yes. Can we just squeeze my babies? <laughs> it's been five days since I've squeezed Aww. my babies. Do and they I even want... understand what's happening? Do they understand election? Do they talk about that in school? Um, no, big natural disasters like weather is a big thing mm. now. Like Rio is kind of understanding hurricanes and all that. Mm. He was very sad and and concerned for the people of Florida mm. and the Gulf Coast. Um, the election, he, he understands voting, I think, Mm. but I don't know. I, if I asked him who the president was, I don't know if he'd say Biden. Cause Um, Amelia had a meltdown the other day. I was like, what's happening? She was like, like, I'm like a full fledged meltdown. She's like, we're like, why are you, why are you upset? She's like, you know why? Like, um, and I was just like, wait, what? And so, so they're learning about voting in school. Yeah. And, you know, and I remember that when you're like, you know, you voted so that way you can learn, you know, but of course they're not telling the kids who to vote for. But she said mm-hmm. one of her friends told her about the bad man and we can all guess who that is. And and um, if he wins all the bad things he's going to do. So she was having like she's really oh, hypersensitive to. And so what do you even say? I was like, wait, what? And she was just like, you know why he can't win. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I was just like, well, Mimi, you're going to be able to vote when you get bigger. And there's going to be so many other elections. And, you know, but she was like almost inconsolable. I'm like, what the hell did this friend say (laughs) Say to you? At first I thought, did you learn about, she's like, no, I learned about voting in school. And that, you know, you vote for the president, you vote for this person. Um, But, you know, that her friend told her that the very bad man that wants to be the president, he's going to do very bad things. And she was really scared about what those things, you know, she couldn't tell you articulate the specific things, just bad. Everything is bad. And that's well, it. I think that is the appropriate emotional reaction we should all be having. I there, and I couldn't think of a better synopsis of the stakes. <laughs> it's a bad man who wants to do bad things. And if he wins, he's going to do bad things. OK, yes. like no lies detected. I Mimi, know. buckle up. I know. She's like, <laughs> Chin I up, darling. <laughs> You're so learning bad. a good civic lesson today. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Also, Mufasa dies. <laughs> oh, you know, Roman, Roman's like, what up? So I was like, oh my god! He's like in the election of 1898. <laughs> <laughs> like, but yeah, oh so, man, yeah, I just yeah, protect so, the children at uh, all costs. But I, are you worried about like you know any sort of? Hmm. <sighs> Physical, like any sort of like out, you know what I mean? Like I am worried about violence. I'm worried about Coretta and Sylvia and um, Harold at the polls. I'm worried about my neighbor, Paulette, who's working the polls up in, you'd be surprised that you get 45 minutes north of Manhattan and it is quite conservative out here. Yeah, Lots of Trump signs, especially where one of my girlfriends lives. Oh, my days. Not by where Remy goes to daycare. Mm. Lots of Trump and not just Trump yard signs like banners. Yeah, you know? I like, saw we God. We want y'all to know. 
put up a literally he had his Trump sign up since you know he lost like in a window and I guess mm. I was like oh he finally took it down like because Newark is very black yeah and then I saw that he had flagpoles installed <laughs> installed which Man. comically enough by a group of clearly migrant workers mm. I was like I wanted to take the a picture irony. I mean they <sighs> were having their lunch on his front lawn Clearly migrant workers. I mean, obviously he must have hired whoever and this is who they hired. I'm like, sir. And they put up this truck. I was like, not a flagpole. I don't, do you know what it takes to put a flagpole? Not like these little, no, no, no. Digging the thing, concrete. Yeah, concrete so footer. I mean, he's flying his flag loud and proud in one of the blackest neighborhoods in the country. And we're just like, okay. I mean, shout out to democracy he, in the first yeah. amendment. He can do that. But yeah. for me, am I nervous? I am, I'm really just turning to our community. I'm turning to my Mandy Moneymaker community. I'm turning mm. to, I was on the, I've been on the last few win with black women calls on mm. Sunday nights. And even if I had it on kind of as I was doing other things on my computer and um, it's just comforting. Cause like the more I can, it just feels like there's other grown ups in the room and that mm. there's, there's such a, I mean, Barack Obama showed up um, on the black uh, win with black men um, call last night that was live streamed and it, it and you know Michelle Obama's speech this week yeah. the Beyonce Kelly Rowland girl and Tina um, introducing her in Houston the fact that she went to Houston yeah. that's the you know I know that you're not I know that it's not the greatest to only look at things that bring you joy in the news mm -hmm. because obviously there is a ton of chaos happening <clears throat> um outside of you know the united states but those are the moments that when i go to sleep i try to run through those in my head mm -hmm. you know um and i just I, I i pray almost that we can just like get through it and get some shit done yeah. because what really is keeping me up at night is like sudan and palestine Girl. and I'm, I'm about to go into therapy tomorrow and be like so let's review how I'm supposed to cope with these yeah. atrocities happening. And like, you know, we just need, we need all the humanity we can right now. The election is important. Mm -hmm. It's not, uh, it is not the only thing happening yes. in the world. It is yeah. one really important thing, but there's also others. Mm -hmm. Whew, life will go on. Santa will come. Mimi's going to sing, you know. On November 1st, I just, let's get through it. Let's support one another. Let's yeah. do what we can. Let's call our friends, call our family, yes. see if granny needs a ride to the polls, see if yeah. uncle needs one. He just got his hip replaced. He came <laughs> out of know. surgery, whatever, you know, see in small ways what we can do to just make sure that people show up and that every vote, every single vote counts. Um, and I, I always keep remembering this, like this refrain. I forget where I've heard it. Probably just... A bunch of different places at this point but um anxiety it's a passenger in the car but it's mm -hmm. not allowed to drive the car mm. you are driving the car yeah so that also helps me when things feel very existential and scary yeah <clears throat> i just yeah it's it's a it's a lot and it's okay to opt out of the worst of it and just yeah. to do enough to stay informed you are allowed to do that you don't actually have to have to roll around in the muck a bit for those mm -hmm. of you who don't have the capacity, you know, there are ways to stay informed. There, are, there are like you know, you can read, like you know, the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, things that are not quite as salacious, just so you're informed, but not like rolling around in the muck of it. And also, too, sometimes you can even opt out of that. Believe me, there's enough people in your life that will say, "Hey, this is what's happening, and this is what's going on." Oh um, yeah, you know, there's this yeah. collective. I was thinking about this today that whenever I walk, especially in the fall. Like I, you know, there's always some leaf that catches my eye. I think to myself, oh my God, this leaf is so freaking beautiful. It's like a freaking superstar, <laughs> you know, because they're like perfectly designed. Yeah. And I think to myself, I might be the only person in the world that will ever see this leaf and this leaf has decided to be beautiful anyway. And what a lesson that, you know, we can shine whether we're going to get seen or not. And then <clears throat> Dr. Green reminded me that like you're shining and it's, it's critically important because you are part of a collective. 
imagine if all the leaves were like, well, I'm not going to be seen. I'm, I'm not going to change this beautiful color in the Northeast. But think about the collective like cacophony of like what the leaves look like when they've all changed colors, that we are all individually so important and connected. And mm -hmm. I know we like to think of them over there and these people over there and that no, 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 no. Like there is a collective consciousness that we all are part of. And to harm one is to harm all. Think about how we collectively felt when COVID happened. I didn't know anybody in Paris, but I felt them because I was feeling the same thing. We all had to sit down somewhere, you know? Mm -hmm. Think about how we collectively felt when, you know, those those planes hit in nine, on 9-11. There was this collective consciousness that here in, in the United States, we were like, what the hell, that we collectively felt. Um, and so we just be best to remember that, like, you can't do harm to one without harming yourself. You know, that there is a collective consciousness. And I don't know that we'll ever get to a place where we remember that, like, we're part of a whole and each leaf is important, whether it gets to be a superstar or not, that is collective. It's collectively important. So I just think about that a lot. Like, I wonder if we'll ever get to a place of civility where we're not like, you know, like it's it's like me against you and somebody got to lose, you know? I think that's... No, I, I I do feel like there are a lot of people who do feel that way, but they're not often on cable news. And yeah. I think one, if you put down the phone, like you said, you're doing and like not not tune in and not be immersed in the in the entertainment, the spectacle of it all. I think mm -hmm. just regular people down at the poll, Sylvia being like, just vote. Glad mm -hmm. you're here. You know, here's mm -hmm. a munchkin. Enjoy. Yes. It's a little stale. It's been here since <laughs> 4 a.m., but here's a munchkin. You know, mm -hmm. have a good day. Um. But yeah, I, I pray, I'm praying for the poll workers and I hope that there's no shenanigans because um, they're just good people volunteering or getting mm -hmm. paid peanuts, you know, to be there. Um, and BA fam, will we talk to them again before the, I don't know if we'll talk to y'all again before the election. This is it. We'll see y'all next Wednesday in the, in the other side. See you <laughs> on the other side. <laughs> Oh okay, we have gosh. to talk about something that cheers us up. Okay. All right. What, what? Okay, you brought up the leaf thing. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> Not the leaf thing. Um, we, we talked about last time we talked about the housewarming because that was such a beautiful warming. Mm. Did we talk about it? Or did I just talk to you about it? I don't remember at all. <laughs> I know, cause like, it's me. Did well, we record I, last week? I do not recall. <laughs> oh, no. Well, you know what? We had NFL star Brandon Copeland. Oh, that's there. right. Well, mm -hmm. I want to say that I had a housewarming and Mandy and her amazing husband came. It was so great to see them both out and be out. Yeah. Um, I thought about Enrique today because I was like, ooh, I need to buy a new um, dishwasher. You know who I should ask? Because, <laughs> you know, he is like... <laughs> Yo, yeah. I remember last time he was like my best buddy because we were both buying appliances at the same time, like your household and mine. And I'd yeah. be like, you're like, well, and VK read a book about, I'm like, put him on the phone. So, <laughs> and I have to say all of the choices that he made me, helped me make with my appliances, I mean, it's been what, six years now? So I mean, A++, plus <laughs> plus, not a not an issue. So I'm like, and VK, so <laughs> I might just yeah. buy the same dishwasher I bought last time that he suggested. But the housewarming Solid. was so great because- I didn't understand until, like, mm, business shade. So, are you familiar with Darius Cooks? Um, wait, no. Okay, so I know you're familiar with um Ta Tabitha Brown. Oh yeah, of course. Right, we didn't talk about this because I was like, we usually don't like dabble in the shades. But so yeah. Darius Cooks is like, mm, I would say he's a food influencer. He's also like a cook. He's had some restaurants, but he's always in some mess. You know, some people actually relish in the mess of it all. He yeah. loves to talk badly about people. He's not and the rapping chef, is he? Because that's my favorite. No, 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 no. Not at all. Okay. Not even close. So okay, anyway, good, good, good. we all know Auntie, Auntie Tab. I don't like to call her Auntie Tab because we're the same age. <laughs> Cousin <laughs> Tab. Careful. Sister Tab. I know. So we all know Sister Tab. Cousin Tab. And so he did this video saying that he believed that her Target deal was, was unwise. Did you hear about this? Oh, Lord. And so... He was like, this is a really unwise deal and Jesse. that she could have made way more money if she created her own line of things. And some of the numbers he was spitting out, I was like, are these just, just made up numbers? He was saying, it was really crazy. And you know, it's one thing to kind of like talk about business in kind of this esoteric sense, but he was calling her like a fool. She's a fool. He just kept saying over and over. He basically was like, here's the thing about his numbers. He said, so let's just say 
cousin Tab made $10 million from this Target deal where she puts her face on certain things or whatever. He yeah. said if she created like um, a pot line for herself, let's just say pots, because that's what he does. Um, and she sold them for like 40 bucks a pot or whatever with her, however many three, 4 million followers, if two, 3 million of them bought the pots, she would make $150 million, some crazy number. And I was like, now here's the thing. Darius is, he might be dumb, but he's not stupid. He's in business. Mm -hmm. And to me, it like, and there were people in the audience, they're like, oh, that is so true. That's so true. One, that's actually not how business works. You don't make gross, you make net. So even if she were to sell a pot on social media for $40, it's like there would be distribution. There would be housing of that pot. There would be- um, She'd be marketing um, it herself. Girl, creating the pot um, yeah. on top of the 10,000 other things that, uh, that Cousin Tab does. Um, and then you'd have to pay for the warehouse and all the other things. So that $40 or whatever you'd make per pot might go down to $5. And then the stress of running that business. Um, also, the assumption that you have 4 million followers and 2 million will buy a pot, that's crazy. Because the conversion rate of social media on the high end, you're looking at about 2 or 3% if you're lucky actually purchasing um, a product. Typically you have two or 3%, the larger the audience actually just engage with your, um, with your content, you know? So mm -hmm. to even say that like, no one, no one closes at a third of the people following them purchasing something, unless you only have a hundred people following you, the larger the audience, the less likely that people are going to engage. And then you get, a, so let's just say 3% of people engage with her content. And then 3% of the people who engage actually buy. And so all of that trouble versus like, you know, working with a target that's going to do the heavy lift and pay you as someone who has done both, you know, like I have sold books separately, you know, like uh, independently, certainly I could get to keep more money. And then I've sold books traditionally where Penguin, my publishing house takes on the heavy lift of printing the books, shipping the books, distributing the books, all that kind of stuff. And I'm here to say there's no necessarily right or wrong, but everyone doesn't want to do all the things themselves. Sometimes they just want to sit back and be like, give me a cute little check. So yeah. I just thought like, um, yeah, it just, it really bothered me to see. I mean, I know he's only doing it because he wants his name out there. But also, it's see. like giving creepy old guy at the gym, telling yeah. you, giving you advice you didn't ask for when like trying to give Simone Biles tips, you know, because yes. you don't recognize her. Or there was that one, that viral video of like the pro golfer, the woman golfer who went to like a, one of those, you know, the, the things where people can golf regulars regulars can golf mm -hmm. and yes, a guy I came over this. and tried to give her advice and she's yes. like i don't know some kind of like crazy world I champion mean, or something yeah that's what it's giving it's like you can also sit down darius yes because, well i mean it's embarrassing for him uh we're giving oxygen to his name which i guess yes. is what he wanted but let me just say tab 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 time yes. tab target i mean like, tab speaking tab uh, um she's she's been in like movies now tv shows and yes. you know this she's not just out here tap you know cousin tab has a whole team i just thought it was just important to be like here people are going to have opinions always and yeah. oftentimes they don't have access to what you are capable of doing Yeah, like who showed him the contract no one did. i mean us. nobody did nobody, nobody did. did you know and so all that you're guessing that she's making you don't know if she makes front end and back end um mm. You know, all that you're guessing that she's making. I just thought that, like, you know, it bears to be said that, like, child, it's okay to sit down and mind your business, yeah. you know? But I get it. His business is to be salacious. Is and it? Because so, doesn't he just cook? Is he not he, just well, you cook? would think, but <laughs> the truth <laughs> of the matter is, I think when things get quiet, he likes to do things like this so people will talk about him. But I think he mm. thought, I don't think he realized how many people would be angry on her behalf because normally his audience is very loyal, even when he does shenanigans, but they said, this is where we draw the line at cousin tab. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just thought that was like, you know, I was like, okay, you know, you got the attention that you were looking for, but even bigger, just for those of you who have businesses that you might find yourself on the receiving end of unsolicited advice from people who have no idea, you know, family members who are like, Oh, you know what you need to do? This is when someone tells me that I'm like, you do it. If it's so easy, Mm. It will make you a million dollars. Oh, so child, don't give it to me. Go ahead and do that million dollar mm. idea. Because it's never as easy. Go ahead as and go to I Whole mean, Foods and eat a sandwich and you go viral on the I internet mean, and then become a multi billion million I dollar mean, brand. Okay. <laughs> exactly. With an Emmy award winning children's program. I mean, and books. 
Because it's so easy. So, <laughs> so if you're out here grinding and doing your thing and people are giving you unsolicited advice, it's, it's you have the wherewithal to say, thank you so much, but you know, I'm actually not taking advice right now. Um, <laughs> and well, people need to learn for... their Black-owned business. Or, I mean, mind their Black-owned business. Mind your so, Black-owned business. Well, yes. Black Enterprise has written about it so that y'all don't have to go digging <laughs> and giving him clicks. Give them clicks instead. Yes. While I was here, though, do um, you remember Christopher John Rogers? Um, yes. He had the line with Target, speaking of Target. Yes. I have a he dress made, of his. Yeah, me too. And I always get tons of compliments on me it. Me too. He's going, he's, 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 uh, he's partnering with the little guys again. Um, he's doing a collection with J crew. So I saw that out. it sold out already, girl, please. <sighs> really? Why said it so sold late? out within like 30 minutes. I, I mean, his Ugh. stuff is amazing. It's just, he's known for his yeah. color. Yeah. And um, I don't know if everything has sold out, but the girlies, you know, the fashion girlies were eating it up. And so we love when a black designer gets there. Just do. I want to be a fashion designer. I mean, I want to be a um, a fashion girly. Wait, is this super old news? How old is this? Not Let's super old, of. but definitely sold out old. Hold on. This isn't from 2023, is it? If it is, you can just delete this, Tanya. No, I think that's Come when they made Black the Enterprise. announcement, but I don't think that's when it came out. Oh, really? Okay. Um. Oh, and Dr. Phil endorses Trump. <laughs> well, I'm ripping his letter off my wall his email that I printed out. All right, let's go to uh, take a break. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and now it's time to booster break or booster break or booster break. Mm. Are you going to boost? Mm-hmm. Is you going to break? Da, 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 da. What you going to do? Mm-mm-mm-mm. What you going to take? La 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 la. Anyway. Um <laughs> <laughs> you want to go first or second? I'll go first. Um, I'm going to do a break. Okay. Let me make sure I get the title right because someone brought oh, gifted yeah, me let this. Me go second because I got a, I got a, I got a boost. <laughs> something positive to end with. Yeah, let's let's get something positive. So, I mean, I'm going to break the fact that someone. Um, uh, so I did a little meetup while I was in Atlanta of Mandy Money Makers, and then I a couple of. That. Yeah, it was really cute. And also just Brown Ambition fans. There was like one who's like, can I come? And I was like, yeah. And so um, this woman called Stacy, she came and Stacy had just founded this organization called Shift Her, which focuses on black women's uh, reproductive health and especially mm-hmm. on peri menopause and menopause and then postmenopause. And she just launched this, I think, last February, but she's already had an event with this renowned um, OBGYN called Jessica Shepard. And Jessica Shepard, she just became the chief medical officer for hers or him's. You know that brand? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, what is it called? Hers. It's like in Target. Um, yeah, she's okay. a chief medical officer at hers. So anyway, Jessica had just written a book called Generation M. And I started to read it because Stacy so kindly informed me that even though I'm in my late 30s, perimenopause starts earlier in women of color because we get everything, mm-hmm. everything great and good for us only. And I'm already, ex- I mean, I'm not, I'm not fully, I'm not going to say I'm in perimenopause. I have not talked to a gynecologist since I pushed out my child and got the checkup. Um, yeah. So, but I'm like concerned because my mom started menopause in her early to mid forties mm. and you can never be, I think, too aware or too prepared. So the book is called generation M Okay. living well in perimenopause and menopause. So check it out. Read it. And you know, there's that, me. there's that documentary um, that's making the rounds. It, there's a former anchor. Oh, I forget her name. I don't want to say it wrong. She's got like, um, I want to say, uh, Soledad. No, I feel like she's middle Eastern, something with a T top, but it's like, it's like really making the rounds. Like, um, let me see if I can find her because it's a, I've heard people are having really good, like, you know, it's just such a great, uh, what is her name? Darn it. Oh, I'm Hmm. so sorry, lady. But I wanted to like, (laughs) she, yeah. So she, she's been having like, honestly, like, her channel has been such a great channel. The M Factor? Oh, Tamsin Fadal? Yes. Is that her? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. The M mm-hmm. Factor. So she okay. used to be a, a news anchor, and then she's like, all these things were happening. No one would explain what it was. Turns out it was 
perimenopause and menopause. And she's like, and you know who's doing a lot of talks about it now too? Halle Berry. You oh, know, great. She's like, yeah. Yeah. So, we've, seen the, we've seen Oprah and Gail yes. and all that. Um, I love, I love that we're talking about it more about mm -hmm. the, and, and I'm, I don't know. I'm curious to hear what your experience has been too, but the whole oh, Perry of it all. Tab yeah. is one of the people that it yes. feels like she's real. She's so real about it. And it just yep. kind of, it just takes the air oxygen out of that idea that it's like something to be ashamed about or something to be hidden. Yeah. It's natural, but if we just, if we like destigmatize it and we talk about it and older generations talk to younger generations, mothers to daughters, aunties to nieces and help us, maybe we won't have to suffer as much in yeah. silence. Like, well, I'll Other say that have. so far, it's probably, I mean, now that I think about, like, I, I used to be so good at sleeping at night and then I wasn't. So it could have been that, thing. you know, that's like, what they said. I know. Sleeping. And you know, it's so crazy because I was asleep on me. Just give me a, a pillow. I don't even need a bed, <laughs> a, a pillow and a flat surface. But then I, 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 even now I have a hard time staying asleep. Um, I will say like my cycle is, is still really regular. That's why I had not thought about it. I always just yeah. associated menopause. You don't get your period. And I was like, well, I'm still getting it. So. Um, yeah. but even still things like, um, oh, I don't know if I sent it to you. I need to, because sorry, you know, um, men listening, actually not sorry. You got daughters is you married mm -hmm. to a woman that even the color of your period will kind of indicate what's happening. So for example, they were like, if you women who will know this, if you kind of get that brick red brownish pre post period, which I was getting that sometimes shows that you have low progesterone. That's why I wasn't able to, to have a baby. Mm -hmm. But I was getting that, and I wish I would have known early. Like, if you're getting that in your mid and early 30s, you might really want to lean in with your doctor and say, ho, ho, you know, like, ideally your period is supposed to be kind of like bright red. And this means that, like, you know, you're – there are certain things that different colors of your period means. And I just was like, whoa, and I had not known mm -hmm. that. Um, and so, yeah, so, but as, you know, the older I get, the more that color shows up, which, you know, which is natural because the older you get, the lower your progesterone levels, the less likely you are to have um, to be able to get pregnant. Um, but yeah, but even mm -hmm. now, like, I mean, I was at my, um, gynecologist the other day and she said, like, be careful, you know, because you, I know you think you can't get pregnant, Tiffany, but like sometimes you she said, girl, <laughs> women be like that last bit of boom, boom on your way out. She said, because yeah. your body's like, hold up. We about to turn, we about to close up shop. Let me, let me sell some of these last <laughs> goods in here. She said, <laughs> The oldest woman that she ever delivered a baby for 52. And she said, the lady was like, is this real? Oh so she said, mm -hmm. she said, you're still getting your cycle. And although it's not as likely, sometimes women actually will ramp up their fertility right as they're about to head on out. You know, as far as, and I was like, okay. Cause you know, up until now I was like, well, I can't, you know, it is what it is. And she said, you know, I don't know where you are as far as wanting to give birth, but just be mindful that, you know, it's, it's not off the table. Mm. you know and I just was just like okay so yeah. yeah I mean other than that I don't know like I I, I don't, the truth of the matter is I might be experiencing penny perimenopause symptoms and I just don't know that's what it was I just was like I'm stressed I'm not sleeping not realizing that that might be a symptom because I'm like well my my cycle is regular I'm like that's not the only symptom um, yeah that's what we yeah. need to know about the sleeping thing yes. and the itchy ears and yeah I, there's uh, yeah there's tons. So that's a good place to start. Um, so the documentary, I just looked it up. It's on yes. PBS for yes. anyone who's interested. It's called The M Factor, Shutting the Silence on Menopause. And then Dr. Shepard's book is called The M or Generation M, mm. Living Well, the Time of Peri, um, Perimenopause and Menopause. So let's educate ourselves. Yes. Because she's coming. <laughs> for us all, if you're, if you're blessed enough to be here this long. <laughs> Well, I'm going to do just a quick boost. Um, um, I had always mentioned that 2023 was like kind of a hard year in business. Um, I was like down 40% in my most profitable business, which is the Literature Academy. And the budget needs to just broke even. So, I mean, like net, net, baby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we just paid our bills. Um, so this year was much better. Still, you know, not kaboom, but, you know, we were, we were better than net, net. And we had strong profits. Um, and so, um, but what the, what the down year taught me was it's, it was time for me to get additional leadership help. So I've got leaders, leaders on my team, but I realized that 
more and more what I'm really good at and what I'm not good at. And I'm not good at strategy. <laughs> I'm really good at networking. You put me in a room, I'm gonna come back with a contract. You know, mm -hmm. you put me out, you know, put me out there, coach. Like I'm gonna, like, I am really good at bringing money to the table, but I really have a hard time. I mean, I'm a good enough leader in that, you know, like I build really great um, community and on, on team, great culture. People feel like they're, they have autonomy, all that stuff. But if you were to ask me day to day, I have a hard time wrapping my mind around creating structure. And so I decided mm -hmm. that I was going to get um, a co-CEO. Um, so I could just do the parts that I'm really good at. And then someone else who is very structured can do that. And so I had this business coach that I've had for the last mm, five or six years. His name is Devesh. Um, and I didn't, I, I, been, I had I been looking. I thought it was Zion, this is Zion something. Well, yeah, well, no, Zion was the coach. So uh, they co-coached. They, were, they had oh, a team okay. of coaches, yeah. So um, Zion is who I met originally, but Devesh was one of his co-coaches. And he's mm -hmm. the one that, like, we, the team really clicked with the most during that time period. And then he continued to coach me afterward. Oh, um, okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, um, so yeah, I'd known him for a while, but I was like, Zion's not going to want to co-CEO. And my friend's like, well, why don't you ask? You never know. Because he, I'm not the only CEO he was coaching. He's a CEO coach. So he mm -hmm. had a bunch of clients. I'm like, yeah, but he has a whole business, girl. He's busy. And she's like, just ask, because I had been looking and it not been going well. And, uh, you know, I already knew how great he was and he's kind, all the things, but also very structured without feeling like oppressive and overwhelming. So I was like, this is going to sound crazy, but I'm looking for a co-CEO. I know you're busy with your own business. And he said, actually, it's not crazy. I believe Zion has either two or three kids. He's married. And he's like, honestly... Um, his kids are not like big kids, you know, they're young. He's like, I am wanting to kind of just settle down basically because of, because of CEO, cause Zion will fly out and go to a meeting with you. That's what kind of coach he is. Like I had a big old mm -hmm. meeting in the city with, he flew from, he's in, lives in Canada. He flew from Canada to meet me, to have the meeting with me. So you could just imagine, you know, how, not to put your business out there, Zion, not Zion, sorry, Devesh, but you can imagine how, when you have young kids, you know, it's a lot because I'm not, like I said, I'm not his only um, client. And he was like, I'd be lying if I didn't say, I thought to myself, if I was ever going to be the CEO of a company, it would be the budgetista because I love the energy, the intention and the integrity with which you run that business. You know, since I've been here for like six years, just watching and seeing how the team navigates. And so we have been testing it out, you know, um, I know. How's it going? And why specifically co-CEO and not like COO or chief strategy officer or something like that. I'm just curious. Because I really wanted, eventually I want to like literally do none of the strategy stuff. Like, cause as a CEO, there are parts that I still have to be responsible for. And ideally, you know, maybe one day I won't even be CEO. I don't know. And so this is like a gentle, like, can you come in and run the back end of the business? Like we just had like such an amazing call. Our team, we have a team call every Monday and all the ideas, like I'm the type, we have all these ideas floating in the air. We talked through them, but we didn't have some sort of document. He created this amazing document where we could see like what the next, what the, the end of the year looks like, like who's responsible for what we went through. When do you think you'll have this done? Cause usually we talk through these things, but there's no visual. And now everyone kind of got to share what they felt. They're like, I love the fact that I don't feel like I'm working in a silo. I know what everyone's working on, but I also know what my responsibilities are. I was not able to provide that. Although we talked through it, I knew where everything was in my head, but I didn't know how to create the systems, if you will, mm -hmm. you know? And so right now there are one of the goals for one of the responsibilities for a CEO, obviously, is to make sure that all things back end are, are are working and create systems and and but also part of the role of the CEO is what I'm really good at is bringing money to the table, and so that's why I said co CEO because I really want to split my responsibilities in half. Like mm. let me go out if you give me the freedom, I will bring back so much money to the table. I speak on a, on a, a conference, a panel, whatever. People say I want to work with you. We work it out. Then I can drop it off. And with the team and then the best you, you create, um, you know, a plan to navigate and work through what does it actually look like the delivery of the thing that I just, you know, help to pull in. And so that's why I said co-CEO, because it really is, there are multiple roles of a CEO and I want to split them in half and just focus on the things that I'm really good at. Um, mm. Yeah. And so I'm looking forward to it. So, you know, I'm taking November off. So he's been here about a month. He was already working with me anyway, but been here with the team for about a month. 
And now he's going to be able to work with them this month without me being here. You know, December, we have half the month. At the end of January, we get to all vote. Or my vote counts equally as everyone else anonymously. Like, because I made the mistake of promoting someone to CEO and then the team being like, who said that? Who's, I don't, I don't want that. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> so oh, I had to, okay. yeah. So I didn't want to make that same mistake again. Um, so I said, you know, I, you know, I could tell they were nervous, but I think they realized now, oh, it really is co. Tiffany is still here. She's just doing her Tiffany stuff, which she's really good at. Um, mm -hmm. And so also too, I let them know if the vote says no, then it's no girl. We will figure out something else. Oh, so they're going to vote on whether or not yes. Devesh is going to be. Yes. Pick, he knows okay. he's well aware. So they will vote. And, it, but I want them to vote and whether it's yes or no, I want them to share why, because either way we want to get feedback. Like, yeah, you were really great, but you didn't communicate as well about this or whatever that is. Um, and so. Yeah. Isn't that pretty unusual to let like staff vote on the CEO? Absolutely. Usually it's like a board on the, the high mountaintop. Yeah, That's it really, absolutely yeah. is. But we never That's navigated cool. that way because here's the thing. In the end, unhappy people work unhappily and I don't want that child. Like yeah. I want that, like, you know, that we're all on board. I've always, um, I always operate the company from a place of transparency. Everyone sees the numbers. Everyone sees our income. Everyone sees our, and because then I don't have to, then people can work with integrity because they know that I do. Mm -hmm. And I want people to know that I actually do care what you think. If y'all hate him, then I want to know because imagine me going out there and then people don't really fully do their work if they're like, mm, here he go, telling me what to do. I, I'm not going to be physically here. So why would I leave you with somebody that you don't know, like, and trust? And so like, yes, you usually don't, but I don't care about what people normally do. Over here at the Budget Nista, it is really important to me to know how the team, whether you're in customer support, hyper part-time contract worker, you know, or you are like lead of, you know, all things community here at the Budget Nista. Everyone's vote counts. And I want to know how you feel and that you get to do it anonymously so you don't have to worry. And then we get to share our feedback with him. And if the answer is yes, great. And if not, then we keep looking. Um, okay. Yes, but I'm excited about it. I mean, so far, I mean, there's not, you know, I'm checking in with everyone. Like, how do you really feel? What about this? How, you know, is there anything he could be doing better? And he's really open to that feedback too. Cause he said, Tiffany, I don't want to work anywhere where people don't want me here. Yeah. So, you know, I don't want to be forced on anyone, um, which made me feel really good. So yeah, I feel really good about it. I feel like the direction that the business is going in is exactly what I'm wanting for myself as Tiffany, not myself as the budgetista, which is, I want to have a business where I get to show up fully in the ways that I enjoy, but not stand in the way for the things that need, that need to be done. And so mm. if I can have someone do those things and then I can do the parts that I enjoy, then I feel like we're rocking and rolling. Well, I'm excited to hear what happens. I know. End of, this, end of um, January, that's when we get to vote. Like, And, you know, it's not like there's been, first of all, they were aware of him before and mm -hmm. then now you're having the transition period. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's great. I think, you know, there's no way to come out on the other side and for someone to say, you know, this was a rash decision and yes. it's going to be re really well thought through. And I think that that kind of transparency is so necessary. And yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for you and um, and for the Unicorn Squad. Yeah. It also reminds me of one of my, I only went to a couple talks at FinCom, but you know, our buddy Jaspreet from Minority Mindset. No, he um, wasn't there. Oh yeah, he was there. I, think ah, I love him. I think he's spoken a few times at FinCon, but this mm. year I got to see him. Um, he's he's so cool. His style. I don't know. I know. Is, he is just the flyest. Okay. I love Jaspreet. <laughs> if we haven't done a Hollaback episode to his uh, his interview, we should. But yes. um, he had such a good talk on his, you know, the he's like how to fail and how he's failed mm. trying to, you know, move from a personal, a personality based business to mm a business that is lev like a personality leveraged business. Oh, ooh, that's good. I'm going to write you know? that down because that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> oh yeah. I think it's what everybody wants to do. Um, but he, yeah, he gave a really good talk and just kind of talked through how he had minority mindset, the YouTube channel, and then he wanted to do a blog and then that was like a $500,000 fail. Mm. And then they pivoted to do his really successful newsletter instead. And, um, it was great. And I think those, like, this is what it really is. You know, you're, you're building a business or running a business in real mm -hmm. time. So it's great to get a little peek behind the curtain because typically we only hear 
you know, they started it in their garage. And then, oh, it's a unicorn and it's a billion girl, dollars, girl. blah, 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 blah. We over here struggling. But you're right. That's exactly what I'm trying yeah. to do. I'm not trying to erase Tiffany from the budgetista. I am the budgetista. But it's not, I don't want to be personality based, but leverage. Like, use my mm -hmm. face, use my whatever, but I, I can't touch every little piece of it. I'm actually not good at all the things. I love that yeah. my team was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like when I teach you, Manny, I'm like, I'm holding you back. And you're like, well, okay. <laughs> Because, well, no, but honestly, because one thing about me is They're that like, agreeing I don't, a little too hard. No, no, no. And honestly, the, the thing is, I don't mind the mirror because I know that it's true. You know, it doesn't make me feel bad. It's not a condemnation of my character. I can yeah. recognize, oh my gosh, without me, this person could do this. And I can recognize, like, because I'll hear it, like, you know, um, people on the team are like, oh, so wait, what's happening? What are we doing? It's just, and I'm just like, I know I'm holding y'all back as far as it relates to like, I'm not that organized. And my mind just doesn't work that way. And instead of trying to force myself into that position, it's like, I hear you. Let me go find someone that can help us with that. And so the team is like, Tiffany is listening. Of course, they're like, well, we love you. I get it. You mm -hmm. know, two things can be true that you think I'm great because I'm so nice and blah, blah, blah. But also, I know that I'm causing a little like turmoil because you're not really sure what you should be working on in one in what order. And so yeah. like, you know, I'm teaching, I also want to teach the team, it is okay to acknowledge the places where you have shortcomings. And it doesn't mean that something's wrong with me. It means like, that's just not my gift. Mm -hmm. this, it, that's okay. You know? So like, I'm okay with, with acknowledging I'm not good at everything. You know, it's just not possible to be, but the things I'm good at, if you position me, I could really ramp up and be better at. And we can find like the best is a spreadsheet king. And, you know, like, that's not me. Y'all ain't never going to get a spreadsheet out of me. Like, and so, you know, the, the, there's a spreadsheet girls on the team who are like, yeah, like Tracy on the team is like very analytical. George, who's my CFO, very analytical. They're like, yeah, spreadsheet, bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> so I love that. Oh, well, good for them. Good for you. And I mean, while you're on your break in November, mm -hmm. the brand will still be making money, right? Like it'll oh, still yeah. be running. Yep. And that is a huge accomplishment in and of itself. So, yeah. All right, then. I guess I'll see you in December. <laughs> well, you'll see me in November, too, just because, you know, just as Tiffany and Mandy. <laughs> yeah. All right, BA fam. Um, don't forget to leave us a review and go to brandambitionpodcast.com and click the survey link at the top. We've got like 150 responses Woo so far, and I am reading them all. And oh yeah, I'm doing the same thing you're doing, Tiff. I'm like, give me your feedback. Let's yes. let's let's build the new era of Brown Ambition together. Okay. Um, so you can check that out again, brownambitionpodcast.com. We'll put a link to the survey in the show notes. And until next episode, what? Friday for VAQA? Mm -hmm. Bye, VA fam. Bye.